Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can optimize your scripts to create a more efficient workflow in Chrome 3 d I'll be showing you how you can take a script as following, which takes a couple of curves and converts it into a Chrome 3 d model into a more optimized script like this one using a reduced number of components. Both of these setups have the same results, but with a more efficient workflow. Here you will see that I've created a series of curves using grasshopper components. They are parametrically controlled where I can control the number of division points on my main two curves. So I have my two edge curves, my connecting curve, and some diagonal curves. So these curves have all been split at the intersections of each other, which is important for our karma setup. Next, all of these curves are brought into Chroma 3D using a line to beam component. They are given an ID so that I can define them later in my definition. So here I've defined this one as A, B, and etc. These curves are then brought into Chroma 3D using the line to beam component. The sets of curves are defined using unique element IDs, for example, A, B, C, D, and they all have cross sections applied. Sometimes I've also turned bending off for some of our curves. And all of these beams are then brought into the assemble model, which you can now preview in the model view and in the beam view. If I turn on my element IDs, you can see my element IDs applied. So here we have a setup where we have brought all our curves into a Chroma 3D model and we can start to apply our loads and supports and run an analysis on. However, there is a much more efficient way to define our elements. So in this setup, you'll see that I've taken the same initial curve input. Rather than doing the splitting in Grasshopper, I have now taken all of my original curves and placed them onto separate branches. So my two edge curves, my connecting curves and my diagonals are placed on a separate branch. I'm now grafting all of these data. Using the line line intersection component, we can flatten the line input and actually split all of our lines at their intersection points. We can then use the match tree component to match the new data to the original data. And then by trimming the tree, we can get our original four branches. Karama 3D uses the same data structures for working in Grasshopper. So for example, here we have four branches. I have created four separate IDs and by grafting them, it places them onto separate branches. For my cross sections, I'm also using the entwine component, placing my four different cross sections onto the separate branches. I can also do the same with my bending by placing a boolean, a one or a zero, depending if it's true or false, and also grafting the input. Now I can assemble the model, and if I look, turn on the model view and the beam view, you will see I have the same exact input. If I turn on my element IDs, you can also see my element IDs. And so this is a much more reduced way of how I can define my setup. As I mentioned, Karamba takes the same principle for matching lists or data in Grasshopper. So if I was to now remove one of my cross sections, you will see that now the last cross section in my list has been applied for my element D. So Karamba follows the same principle for matching lists and data in Grasshopper. At the moment, my element IDs are applied for each branch because I've grafted the input. If I turn graft off, it will actually apply this list structure according to the longest list principle for each of my branches. So there you can see my initial 
edge curves have now A, B, C, D, D, D. Similarly with my edge curves on the other side. And I also have an A, B, C, D for my diagonals and my connecting elements too. So this is a very important step when managing your data in Grasshopper. Another method I can use to define my cross sections is to use simply the cross section selector. So in this example here, which I'm going to now replace, I have now used the cross section selector to select four different cross sections. I'm grafting the in, uh, input and I'm also creating a color for each of my cross sections. So here you can see the cross sections which have been selected. And if I take the output of the entwine and replace it with the output there, you will see that now these cross sections have been applied to my elements. Of course, I want to make sure I re-graft the input for my element IDs. So now my element IDs have been defined properly. And if I go to my cross-section names, I can preview the cross-sections. So here you can see I have my HEA400 for my edge beams, my CHS406 by 13 for my connecting elements, and the diagonals are the IPE80s. And so that's it for this short example of how you can optimize your scripts for a more efficient Karma 3D workflow.